So overall, Sony's speakers, headphones, and earbuds have all been improving quite nicely over the last few months. And with the Sony WF-1000XM5s, these are a pair of impressive ANC earbuds that have some important upgrades over their predecessors. But today, we're going to see how the Sony WF-1000XM5s compare to the Sony LinkBud S, which are a pair of mid-tier ANC earbuds that I feel a lot of people are sleeping on. Now regarding pricing, the Sony WF-1000XM5s have a retail price of $300, which is up there, but I do expect these earbuds to go on sale from time to time. But then there are the LinkBud S, which have a retail price of $200, but these now like to go on sale for $130. Not bad at all. Overall, if you want to pick either of these two earbuds up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat. Link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming, and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat, and look out for more designs coming soon. And also, please remember to hit that like button, and let's get subscribed. Now first, let's talk about their case. Now, both of these earbuds have decently sized cases for everyday carry. Both of these cases are very small and they aren't too noticeable when they're in your pocket. However, the WF-1000XM5's case is smaller than the LinkBud S case. The XM5's case is just a little larger than the AirPod Pro's 2 case, which I feel is the gold standard when it comes to case size. But also, the XM5's case isn't just smaller than the LinkBud S case, it also has a wireless charging, whereas the LinkBud S don't. And in general, wireless charging is something that Sony is reserving for their more premium ANC earbuds. But also, when it comes to battery life, there is a big difference here. Now, with the LinkBud S, these have an advertised combined battery life of 20 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on. The earbuds themselves can go for 6 straight hours and the case can supply 2 additional charges. However, if you were to use these earbuds with the active noise cancellation turned off, then you'll be able to extend their battery life that way. The earbuds themselves can go for 9 straight hours plus those 2 additional charges from the case is going to give you a total combined battery life of 27 hours. But then there are the Sony WF-1000XM5s and these have an advertised combined battery life of 24 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on. The earbuds themselves can go for 8 straight hours, plus the case can supply 2 additional charges. However, if you were to use these earbuds with the active noise cancellation turned off, then you're going to have a combined battery life of 36 hours. The earbuds themselves can go for 12 straight hours, and then plus those 2 additional charges from the case. So overall, the battery life on the LinkBud S is okay, but with the Sony WF-1000XM5s, you are going to get better battery life, plus these do have a better battery life to case size ratio because they have a smaller case. The earbuds themselves have better stamina, and the case itself has wireless charging. But now let's talk about the earbuds themselves. Regarding fit, both of these earbuds are standard fitting in-ear earbuds, and they both go into your ear canals a decent amount, like let's say the Galaxy Buds 2. These aren't shallow fitting in-ear earbuds, like let's say the AirPod Pro 2, both QC Earbuds 2, Beat Studio Buds Plus, or Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Now, the good thing about standard fitting in-ear earbuds is that they offer better lockdown than shallow fitting in-ear earbuds, so they aren't going to wiggle out as easily as, let's say, the AirPod Pro 2 or Beats Studio Buds. But they might not feel as comfortable. But the really important thing that we need to point out about both of these earbuds are the ear tips. Now, the LinkBud S come included with silicone ear tips, like with the majority of earbuds out there, and I have zero issues with the silicone ear tips. But then, there are the Sony WF-1000XM5s, and these only come included with foam ear tips. Now, these foam ear tips are supposed to offer more lockdown and passively block out more noise than silicone ear tips, and they do that. But I find that these foam ear tips can get itchy after a while. Now, this might not be the case for everyone, but it is for me. But overall, comfort-wise, I do prefer the LinkBud S over the WF-1000XM5s. Personally, I just wish the XM5s just also came included with a set of silicone ear tips, like with the original Sony WF-1000Xs. But when it comes to their Bluetooth connectivity, with both of these earbuds, each earbud establishes a connection with your phone. So if you just want to use one earbud at a time, you can use either one, it doesn't matter. And this is the connection setup that we expect to see from all of our earbuds nowadays. But also, with both of these earbuds, each earbud can be simultaneously connected to two Bluetooth devices at the same time, regardless of ecosystem. So you can easily hot swap from one device to another, making both 
of these earbuds are great options if you're a power user with devices from different ecosystems. And when it comes to overall performance, both of these earbuds have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. And when it comes to audio codecs, both of these earbuds have support for SBC and AAC, but they both also have support for LDAC, which is Sony's own in-house high-res audio codec. Just keep in mind that if you want to use LDAC, you do have to be an Android user because iPhones top out at AAC. And also, if you do decide to use LDAC, that is going to take an additional toll on your battery life, which could be a big problem for the Link Bud S. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these earbuds. Now with both of these earbuds, you can go into their app and you can either choose from a few pre-made EQs or you can make your own. So you can make them sound however you want. But these earbuds do sound and perform differently from one another. Now with the Link Bud S, these sound like your typical pair of Sony earbuds. They sound a little narrow because their instrument separation isn't the greatest and the bass on these earbuds strictly resonates. Overall, I would mainly recommend these to someone that likes a really bass heavy sound signal. Signature. But then there are the Sony WF-1000XM5s. Now these sound more open because they have better instrument separation and they also have better detail in the instrumentals. But then there's also their bass. The bass on these earbuds both resonates and there is some kick to it if you go into their EQ and raise the clear bass lighter. So overall both of these earbuds sound good but the Sony WF-1000XM5s do sound better than the Link Bud S because they have better instrument separation and their bass is a lot more dynamic. But when it comes to controlling your media with these earbuds, both of these earbuds are using touchpads. And overall, these touchpads are easy to use and they're very accurate and you can somewhat customize these touchpads through their app. But I know some people just don't like to deal with touchpads on their earbuds. Nonetheless, these are fine. But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these earbuds. Now the active noise cancellation on both of these earbuds is very impressive for their respective price points. However, I do want to taper expectations here. Don't expect the ANC on either of these two earbuds to block out as much noise as a proper pair of premium ANC headphones. Like let's say the Sony 1000XM5s, Bose QC45s, AirPod Max, or the Sennheiser Momentum 4s. And when it comes to overall ranking, for me, the AirPod Pro 2 and the Sony WF-1000XM5s are neck and neck for first place, closely followed by the Bose QC Earbuds 2, below them are the Sennheiser Momentum 3s, below them are the Sony WF-1000XM4s, below them are the Sony Link Bud S, below them are the Jabra Elite 85Ts, below them are the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, and below them are the Google Pixel Buds Pro. Now, the reason why I say the Sony WF-1000XM5s and the AirPod Pro 2 are neck and neck is because with the AirPod Pro 2, they do a slightly better job of blocking out constant lower frequency sounds like road noise. Whereas with the Sonys, these do a slightly better job of blocking out random higher frequency sounds like chatter. But also, the Link Bud S rank very well here, and these are a pair of mid-tier ANC earbuds. And the XM5s do have an advantage over the Link Bud S, because the XM5s are using their foam ear tips. But still, even if the XM5s were using silicone ear tips like the Link Bud S, they're still going to block out more noise than the Link Bud S. But like I mentioned in the past, I only use the ANC on my earbuds when I have to, and what really matters to me is the quality of of their ambient mode. Now with both of these earbuds, you can adjust their ambient mode to your liking. And the microphone array on both of these earbuds do a really good job of blocking out wind noise when walking outdoors. However, I am gonna have to say that the ambient mode on the XM5s does sound a little more natural than the ambient mode found on the Link Bud S. But also, both of these earbuds have a speak to chat which works a little like this. Hello there. So this is Speak to Sound. Basically, when you start talking, your earbuds will automatically lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you so that you can talk to someone without even to have to remove the earbuds out of your ears. Now, these earbuds will stay in this state for a preset determined amount of time, or you can always cancel Speak to Sound by tapping on the earbuds like this. Thank you. 
but personally i don't use speak to chat because it's very easy to accidentally activate it if you talk to yourself very quietly that's going to activate it if you sing along to your music that's going to activate it if you laugh that's going to activate it and sometimes outside sounds can activate speak to chat so that's why i just don't use speak to chat because there's just a lot of accidental activations and personally i do feel that just removing your earbud when you're going to talk to someone it just works just fine but finally, here's the microphone test. Now, I feel that Sony has always struggled with their microphones on their earbuds and on their headphones, but it is getting better. Now, I feel that the microphone on both of these earbuds is decent enough to take phone calls with while in a quiet room, but I do feel that the microphone on the XM5s does a better job of focusing on my voice than the microphone found on the LinkBud S. But when it comes to blocking out noise pollution, I do feel that these microphones do struggle quite a bit because with the XM5s, these are pushing down on my voice and you can hear some road noise in the background and also there's just some interference going on with my voice as well. And it's the same thing with the real input as you can hear some road noise in the background and my voice is getting pushed down quite a bit. And for comparison's sake, these are the AirPod Pro 2, and these are doing a much better job of reducing all of this road noise. Because for comparison's sake, if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this road noise. But if we were to switch back over to the AirPod Pro 2, it is severely reduced. And when it comes to blocking out chatter, the AirPod Pro 2 also do a much better job of reducing all of this noise pollution. Whereas with the Link Bud S, these are pushing down on my voice and you can hear some chatter in the background. And the XM5s are also struggling quite a bit to block out all of this chatter. So overall, I do feel that the microphones on both of Sony's earbuds are decent enough to take phone calls with while in a quiet room. However, you don't want to take phone calls with these earbuds if there is a lot of noise pollution around you. But with all that being said, both of Sony's earbuds are really good because they both have a very impressive active noise cancellation, they both have good Bluetooth connectivity, they both have small cases, and they both have good sound. But my main critique about both of these earbuds is that they need better sounding microphones for phone calls. But if you are trying to choose between these two earbuds, with the Sony Delia 1000 XM5s, you are going to get better active noise cancellation, better sound, an even smaller case, and better battery life. The only thing that you want to look out for are the foam ear tips, because they might not be for everyone. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great, and you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.